Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. So let's take a look at another kinematics problem where we have a helicopter flying at an altitude of 100 meters with a horizontal speed of 13 meters per second, releases a package without pushing it, ignore air resistance. Okay, what does that mean? Let's take it from the top. So a helicopter flying, right? Kind of looks like an Apache helicopter. Um, at an altitude of 100 meters. So let's stop right there. So let's do let's do something here. We're gonna we're gonna uh, let's put here right our given information. Right, what is given in the problem? It says altitude. So that's tricky, but an alarm word. So this is this is mentioning height, and it's flying at an altitude of 100 meters. So the plane is flying, and right where everything is about to happen, we are at 100 meters, meaning that h initial or you can write y initial is equal to 100 because initially we're starting up here okay and then it says with a horizontal speed of 13 meters per second well we know we have a velocity and it says horizontal so that's another key word there that means we have velocity in the x direction so velocity initial in the x direction is equal to 13 meters per second. Okay, that's very important. When you see the word horizontal, know that it's V initial or in, yeah, in any case, it's on the x axis, right? And only corresponds to V initial in the x axis. All right, and then releases the package without pushing it. Okay, so we're not adding any other velocity to it or acceleration. Uh, ignore air resistance okay so this is our given information and we also know something intrinsically right if we start here at y initial equals 100 when we get to the floor which is y final it's going to be zero right because we're going to hit the floor so we start here we end here okay so here we have diagram of what's happening and so as this package is let go right here at 100 meters, it's, it's let go in this direction because the, the helicopter is moving in that direction. But it's going to start falling because it's subject to gravity. So as it falls, right, it covers a distance of x final minus x initial. Okay, the reason that it says range is because range represents the maximum distance so range is the max distance that object fell, right? That is denoted by range or R, right? But if I just say, if I know that the range is here, but I want to know where the package was at X equals some value here, you know, I want to know it here, then that is just um, X, the change in X, which is x final minus x initial right this is normally how we find the position of something but if we want to find the maximum distance that it covered then the change in x is equal to r so that gets a little confusing sometimes uh, in the in the word problems but range just means the longest distance that it's going to cover nothing is longer than that one here you can make it shorter depending on where you want to locate the package Okay, so now the first thing we want to do is draw a free body diagram of the situation. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my package here. And let's see, let's draw a little bit of 3D at least. Okay, something like that. Okay, so we have our package here. We know that it's 100 meters above the ground. Okay, we know that velocity initial horizontal, right, which is the x, so velocity initial horizontal, which represents the x, is equal to 13 meters per second. Okay, this vector here is an, so this is a vector, and these are arrows. Um, this one is not, I should have, maybe I'll put, this is just representing the height. 
Okay, so this right here is the free body diagram. We have velocity, initial, horizontal uh, in that direction, right? We have velocity, initial in the Y at zero, right? We did not push the package down. They pushed the package or when they let it go, it was already traveling at a velocity in the horizontal direction. So, in you know, because of that fact, we know that velocity initial is zero. Just like we know that height initial is 100, height final or Y final is going to be zero. Okay. And the last thing that, that goes in between both of those is going to be the magnitude. Right here. Velocity. Okay. And this right here is the magnitude. So um, we'll, we'll review what that is in the, uh, in part C where it asks for it. Okay. So it's just, it's just a combination of both of these. Maybe I should draw a dotted line here and a dotted line here. Okay. So now that's done. Okay. We have, um, and if we want, we just do X initial and, uh, somewhere over here, the X final. Okay. Part B. All right. Part B. How long will it take for the package to touch the ground at X final? Okay. So when we read the question, how long will it take? We're looking for time. How long will it take? Right? So let's write that first. T is equal to something. This is the goal. So that way we don't forget it. Okay. What we're looking for here is time at X final. Okay, so now let's look at uh, some formulas we could possibly use. So if we have height, right, uh, we also have horizontal distance. So let's just write what we know. We, we know, we know uh, an equation that includes the height or change in y, right? So we have the change in y is equal to velocity initial in the y times time minus one half g t squared, right? It's minus because the gravity is minus, so we already include it in the equation. And here I'm gonna change this so it could be a little more clear. We got y two, or y final, minus y initial is equal to velocity initial in the y times time, minus one half g t squared. All right, now we can work with this, right? because we're looking for time. This has T in it. And it looks like we have a lot of these values, right? So let's, let's see exactly how many of these values we have. Um, we know Y final is zero because the package hits the ground. So we're not going to need this one. Okay. Right? Y initial was given to us at 100. So we have that velocity initial in the Y. Again, that's zero because the, we did not push the package down. So this whole quantity is zero and we know gravity and we're looking for time. All right, so let's let's rearrange what we have here and solve for T. So I'm gonna leave negative Y initial on this side, All right? This is zero and then this is on the other side, minus one half G T squared. All right, remember we're solving for T. So let's get rid of the negatives and we're gonna put the two on the other side on top because it's on the bottom here we're going to multiply it to the top so we're going to have 2y initial is equal to gravity times squared so i've just put the 2 on the other side and i multiply both sides by negative 1 which canceled it out okay now i'm going to pass the g to this side it's on top over here i'm going to divide it to this side so it's, i'm going to have 2y initial over g because i'm going to put it underneath equals times squared and then finally get rid of this squared we're going to square root both sides so i'm going to have t is equal to square root of 2y initial over g and that's it so now let's plug in the values and see what we get okay we have t is equal to the square root of 2 initial height 
is 100. So we got 100 divided by gravity, which is 9.8. Okay, we put that in the calculator. We're going to get time is equal to 4.5 seconds. So now that's how long it's going to take for the package to hit the ground when it was released from a height of 100 at horizontal velocity 13 meters per second is going to cover a distance well we don't know the distance yet but we know that it's going to take 4.5 seconds to cover that distance okay so that was for part b now let's take a look at part c so let me see if you guys can see this over here is part c so i'm going to write it up here Okay, what is the velocity of the package? Let me write C here. What is the velocity of the package as it hits the ground? What angle does it make with the ground? Okay, so a little bit tricky on this part, but nothing too crazy. What is the velocity of the package as it hits the ground? Okay, and then what angle does it make with the ground? So let's say the package was up here at some point. Right, 100 meters above the ground. Then it fell, right? It covered a distance. So this is X initial. This is gonna be X final over here. It covered this distance. Now it's here, okay? Let's color it in. What they're asking for is, what is the velocity of the package as it hits the ground? So what is this velocity if it continues, right? We know that it was initially started with a horizontal velocity in the x direction of 13 meters per second, right? We know that the y was zero. Okay, so let's, let's put those two together. We have here, this is the vector that we're looking for, right? And this, like I said, is going to be magnitude because it's going to be comprised of or made up of two vectors okay and i cover this in one of the other videos for review vector notation this vector here is going to be the magnitude and we're going to break it up into components we know this one here is the same one as this so that's v initial and the x and if we go down like this this is v initial and the y all right and so now you can see that if we put these two together, right, we get this middle one. This middle one is magnitude, and it is Vx squared plus Vy squared. Sometimes they have uh, these, these symbols next to it, signify magnitude. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. This is the symbol that we're looking for, magnitude. All right, and with that, we need to find we need to find um, velocity final. So these vectors right here represent the um, the final. Sorry, this is final. Okay, so velocity final in the x is going to be the same thing as velocity initial because we didn't push it anymore, right? So this is velocity initial in the X. They're both equal to each other. They're the same. But velocity final in the Y changes because initially when we let it go, we didn't push it down. So it had no velocity in the Y direction, right? But as it fell, it kept gaining speed in horizontal and in vertical. So by the time it hit the ground, it has some um final velocity in the x which is the same thing as it started with and now it has some velocity final in the y that is different from when it started because when we started we didn't push it down we only pushed it horizontal by the time it fell we have some velocity in the y and that's what um, we need to find we need to find this one in order to complete this equation all right i'm going to write the equation a little bit more clear so really what we're looking for is velocity final magnitude. 
right? And so it's the same exact equation. I'm just gonna subscript exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for velocity in the x, but we're looking for velocity final in the x squared and velocity final in the y squared. Okay, so that should be a little more clear as to why we have to find velocity f and uh, final in the x, which we already know what it is, but we don't know what velocity final in the y is. Okay, so that's what we have to look for. All right, let's look for another equation that has velocity final uh, y in it. All right, and from previous um, videos, you should have seen this this equation here, velocity final in the y is equal to velocity initial in the y minus gravity times time. And again, it's minus gravity because it's already included the negative sign. So it's best to just write it like that. Perfect. So we have velocity final in the y. And that's what we're looking for in order to complete this equation because this is the overall goal. So let's see if we can get some numbers out of this. Okay, do we know velocity initial in the y? Yes, because initially we did not push it down, so it has zero. So this is zero, velocity initial in the y. Velocity final in the y is what we're looking for, okay? Gravity we know, and time it takes to cover that distance, right? We calculated in part, b so perfect let's find out what velocity final is so velocity final in the y is equal to we don't need to write that and this is minus 9.8 times 4.52 seconds okay we add that up let me multiply these two together and let's see we're gonna get negative 44.3 meters per second okay and it's negative because it's going in the negative direction remember that we have the Cartesian coordinates we have plus y is that direction minus y is going down plus x is to the right minus x is to the left so if this vector here is going down then it makes sense that it is negative the velocity is negative it's just indicating the direction okay perfect so now we're one step closer. Now let's look at the equation again and see if we can um, f substitute these two for values now. Okay, so it asks us for the velocity of the package as it hits the ground. So that's this. So we have velocity of the package, final, as it hits the ground, which was made of velocity final in the x, which we know that is the same as the initial, right? Because it wasn't given any more uh, push horizontally like it stated here without pushing it. So this is all it got. Okay, so we're going to do 13 squared plus what we got here, which is negative 44.3 squared. Okay, let's put that in our calculator. And then we're going to get the magnitude velocity final is 46 point two meters per second that is this one right here so i'm going to draw it on the side here this is velocity initial in the x actually sorry this is velocity final in the x velocity final in the y right because we're looking at this part now and what we just calculated right here is this one right here Okay, we broke it up into the components and that's how we got this magnitude equation. But this one in red is the one that we calculated. Okay, all right, and let's do the angle. I think the angle will fit here. So now what angle does it make with the horizontal? All right, so let's look at here. Okay, that angle right there. So this is the horizontal floor, and there's an angle that it makes as it comes in, and that's what they're asking for, 
right? What angle does that make? Well, whenever you think of angle, right, think of tangent. So tangent theta is equal to y over x, right? If we have velocity that we're looking for, we're simply just going to change it to tangent theta of velocity final in the y over velocity final in the x. You see how it's y over x, but we still keep the y on top and the x on the bottom, right? So this is good, and we need to solve for theta. So we're going to do theta is equal to arc tan our tangent of velocity final um, in the y direction over velocity final in the x direction. Okay, and uh, if you guys are confused about the arc tan, I uh, have another video explaining some trigonometry review. So now we just need to plug in the numbers. So let's do, okay, theta is equal to arc tan now, velocity final in the y direction. Hey, this one is, oh no, this is magnitude. Velocity final in the y right here. So, negative 44.3, okay, over velocity final in the x, which we know is velocity initial in the x, which is 13. Okay, and putting that in the calculator, Theta is gonna equal 73.6 degrees. This is the angle that the package makes as it comes through the ground with this vector, okay? All right, and last part. Let's see. All right, so the last part you cannot see, but I'll write it. So part D. Okay, part D says the range of the package once it hits the ground. So the range of the package, okay, um, I'll just write range of the package. Eh. Once it hits the ground. Okay, so perfect. This goes back to the free body diagram right here and understanding range and the difference between that and, and um, the change in X. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at that directly now. Okay, first let's, let's, um, let's see what they're asking for, okay? So the range of the package. So we want R equal to something, all right? That's what we're looking for. What are the equations that we know for horizontal distance? Because range is associated with horizontal distance. Well, we know that the change in x is equal to velocity initial in the x times time plus one half acceleration in the x times time squared. Okay, we know this equation, right? Let's write it here a little more clear. We got x final minus x initial for that. And everything else, I'm just going to rewrite. Okay, so perfect. This is the equation that we need. Okay, now remember I said that if we know the range, if we want to know the range, which is the final position, right, which is the maximum position, then we're asking for something specific. We don't, we don't want uh, some random value of x and to know it here, we want to know the maximum. So this side here is going to change to r. r is equal to, and then I'm going to write the other side. Okay, so nothing has changed except for the left side where because they're asking for range, I'm no longer interested in uh, x final that is less than the maximum. So I'm just going to change that to r. All right, and then one more thing in this equation, right? It's always good to write this last piece because in case they give you acceleration in the x, you can use that. But usually you don't have acceleration in the x direction so it says that it was with without a push so it wasn't given any acceleration in the x direction the reason that there's acceleration in the y direction going down 
is because gravity is always working against things that are um, moving in the air, right? But in the horizontal, you have to apply that push. You have to keep on pushing that object in order for it to feel an acceleration. And nothing is behind this package continuously pushing it uh, forward. So there's no, there's no acceleration. So then we're just left with r is equal to velocity initial in the x times time, which looks very nice. And that's it. Let's plug in the numbers. So we know the time it takes to get to the end, which we calculated in part B, right? So we have range is equal to velocity initial in the x, which we know was given to us. All right, so let's do 13. And the time it takes for you to cover the entire distance, we calculated here, 4.52 seconds. And so then finally, we're gonna have a range of 58.8 meters. And that's the distance. That's the maximum distance that the package covers. Okay, let me see. Alrighty guys. Um, I'm going to be posting a couple more kinematic problems similar, so I hope they helped.